I've seen a lot of videos talking about this, but none of them really go into great detail on how to not only succeed at max level in vanilla, but how to thrive. The first thing you need to do before even launching the classic client is download Questy. I'm not exactly sure if this specific add-on is going to be available on the ported version of vanilla, but I'm sure there will be some sort of equivalent that will be developed during the beta phase of classic. Questy is essentially a revamped version of the Quest Help add-on for 1.12, which has a bunch of awesome features that will increase your standard of living while leveling substantially. From minimap markers, to displacement vector optimization in the guiding arrow, tooltip quest logging, and map details. Questing in vanilla isn't so intuitive and obvious as it is in today's game. You actually have to read the quest text, sometimes figure out a riddle, and really find out for yourself where it is you have to go. This add-on will carry your ass from zero to hero overnight. You definitely want to start by getting one or two gathering professions, and once you hit max level, you're either going to drop both of them or drop one of them. The most basic one that people usually go is skinning, because it flows so easily into your leveling process, kill skin, repeat, kill skin, repeat. But the problem with this profession is so many people are going to be using that mindset that there's going to be an oversupply and prices are going to drop because of it, so it's not incredibly lucrative. In Classic, professions are a huge element of the game. It is of the utmost importance that you train professions as soon as possible. All the starting zones have a bunch of profession trainers, so don't forget to pick them up. Herbalism is probably something you want to be picking up on your way up. Consumables are the crux of raiding. It's not really possible to be competitive without them. Therefore, you're probably going to want to be as self-sufficient as possible in this regard. Here's an example of what your bag should look like in preparation for a raid, or a week or two weeks of raiding. I have a bunch of spell power flasks here, titan flasks here that I'm probably going to be selling, spell power slash fire power flasks here, weapon oils, mage blood elixirs, and a ton of uh, elemental protection pots. All of these consumables are stackable for a full row of buffs on your character. The elemental protection pots, nature protection and fire protection respectively, are some of the most lucrative potions in the game. These are relatively easy to farm, and 40 man raids are consistently chugging these throughout Molten Core on Nixia to avoid fire mechanics for multiple bosses. The nature ones are used in AQ40, frost ones become useful in Nax, and as an alchemist you can make gold solely farming these. Fishing is often something that's pretty overlooked in Niwao, but in Classic, you almost need fishing to complement your alchemy for certain classes. Uh, for example, as Fire Mage in AQ40 and Nax, you'll find yourself very often in Stranglethorn Vale casting your line trying to catch Firefin Snappers. These fish are used to make the all-powerful uh, Elixir of Greater Firepower, which gives 40 fire spell power. As a tank, it starts day one. The Flask of the Titans is the most expensive and tedious flask to grind. The mats are 30 Grom's Blood, 1 Black Lotus, and 10 Stone Scale Oil. Stone Scale Oil is crafted by alchemists with a little fish called the Stone Scale Eel. The pool spawns for this fish are limited, as well as highly farmed. Being able to fish and craft this stuff will make you tons of gold considering all the main tanks are desperate for these items. The Grom's Blood is also less ab abundant than Dreamfoil, and therefore more lucrative. You farm this in Felwood and Blasted Lands. The working, tailoring, blacksmithing is also very important, but a bit more niche, you know, specific people are going to be wanting to pursue those uh, as endeavors. Uh, there are patterns for incredible pre-raid items that were added throughout various patches, but I'm not sure if those are going to be implemented at the start of Classic WoW, seeing as they were later implemented to catch up as catch-up mechanics to aid in uh, the entry process for raiding for new players. Uh, these items include the Bloodvine set for tailoring, Titanic legs, and uh, Lionheart helm for blacksmithing, and of course, resistance gears uh, throughout, fire resistance and MC for your tanks, nature resistance for the entire raid in AQ40, and frost resistance for the whole raid in Nax. Focusing on your professions is definitely the smart way to go. You shouldn't just level to max and completely ignore them. There's no real rush to be level 60 immediately, because progression vanilla is relatively slow. If you're two weeks behind the fastest people on the server, you're not really gonna be missing much, honestly. Um, and in fact, you might even be ahead of them in a lot of, uh, in a lot of aspects by having your, your professions leveled up near to 300. Uh, professions will also help you make gold as you level up, which could potentially fund your mount by level 40 or 50, depending on you know, how diligent you are. Most people, or not most people, but a lot of people at level 60 won't even have a basic ground mount. One thing that's also not to be overlooked is, is first aid. Um, you're definitely going to be, you know, using your cloth or at least storing up your cloth if, if you're smart to level up first aid if you're not a healer at, at least or a tank. Um, there's a lot of fights, 
specifically in uh, BWL and uh, MC, I'm not exactly sure, but there's a lot of fights that have downtime. So essentially you're gonna be like absorbing a boss mechanic, taking damage, and then getting a debuff or something and having to LOS from the boss for a specific amount of time and you have downtime there. It's in all the top end guilds, during that downtime, it's your job to bandage yourself rather than expect a healer to heal you. So first aid is, is, is actually something that's used as a mechanic in raiding, which you don't see nowadays. You hit level 60 and you're probably extremely excited. Good, you should be. It probably took you at least two weeks of Slash played and over a month of your life to reach it. You definitely should be excited because the fun has just begun. The best thing you can do at this point if your intention is to secure a raid spot in a good guild is to start working on your pre-raid BIS set. BIS being best in slot, but I'm sure a lot of you guys know that. There's a ton of dungeons available from level 50 to level 60 that drops the gear that you're gonna need to raid. So you can even start this process and you definitely should start this process before you hit level 60 if you want to get ahead of the curve. Depending on how Blizzard is introducing patches, things will vary though. Dire Maul is a zone that has three dungeons, Dire Maul East, Dire Maul North, and Dire Maul West. These were later added in patch 1.3 and they drop significantly better itemized gear. So if these dungeons aren't available, you're going to have to substitute some of those items for whatever alternatives you can find. You want to google pre-raid list BIS spreadsheet and you'll find databases that were made from the NOS days listing all the best items for each slot. And there's a different tab for each class as well. These are incredibly useful and I'll link it in the description. All right, so here's a little example on uh, what a BIS set looks like, basically, uh, pre-raid BIS. So essentially the theory behind gearing in vanilla is you're trying to get uh, hit percentage as number one and they're they're specific so you'll see here this is spell hit there's spell hit and then there's melee hit um, for casters uh, you need 17% spell hit I believe for bosses yeah 17% mages it's about 11% after talents and warlocks it's 12% after talents uh, melee you need 8% um, melee hit for uh, your yellow yellow strikes so your ability strikes like sinister strike and whatever and then you need um, 27% to not miss any auto attacks while dual wielding, so white hits. 27% uh, is pretty unattainable, uh, even with best in slot gear, I'm pretty sure. But the idea is that as, as a melee, you're pretty much stacking hit, as much hit as you could possibly find. Um, so let's go over this set. This set, as you can see, um, it's for Warlock, and uh, there's a theme that's being followed throughout the whole set. So spell power and hit, spell power and hit, Spell power, hit, spell power, spell power, spell power, spell power, hit crit, spell power, and obviously throughout the whole set, it's the same thing. So essentially what you're doing in vanilla after hitting max level is running around the whole world and uh, going to specific dungeons and trying to get specific items from those dungeons and make an entire set. It's actually a lot of fun. And uh, the next thing you're going to want to do, obviously I didn't do it here because this is just a show character to show you guys but you're gonna to wanna to enchant these items as well, as best as you can. So farm gold or level enchanting or whatever, and uh, try to get this set enchanted. If, if, you, if you do that and you've also leveled up professions and stuff and you're really ready to raid, you're going to get into a raid because it, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just the way, it's the way, this, it's the way uh, old WoW works. You know, there's, there's a limited amount of people that are going to be putting in the effort to actually attain this sort of setup. And uh, if you're one of those people, well, you're going to get in the guild. Let's just leave it at that. One thing that you're definitely going to want to consider doing once hitting max level is queuing up Alterac Valley on, you know, whatever off time you have. Um, essentially, the rep that you get from Alterac Valley is pretty substantial, so you can get up to Exalted relatively quickly, and you can get amazing items from this. So there's a dagger here, there's a blade, or that's the alliance alternative, sorry. Um, mace, an axe. Once you get exalted, there's mounts, there's offhands for casters and healers, there's a two-handed mace for warriors, which is really, really, really good. There's a shield, there's a really amazing uh, melee ring, which gives you crit, hit, and uh, attack power, and uh, just, you know, tons of awesome rewards. There's also a quest from winning in Alterac Valley that gives the Ice Barb Spear and a, a, a wand that has uh, frost spell power for mages, which is really good in Molten Core. And uh, 
Hunter crossbow, which is one of the better crossbows that you can get uh, pre-raid. One thing that you're going to want to be doing while gearing out uh, at max level is making sure that you're completing your attunement quests. So don't forget that uh, for Molten Core you have to complete BRD. Um, and then uh, for for Onyxia you have to do a uh, quest chain. For U uh, BWL you have to clear UBRS and Naxk has a rep grind and hand in. Uh, so that's another thing that you'll be doing at max level. If you guys like this video and you want to see more like it, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe to my channel. It's very hard to keep making videos without an audience, so if you guys want more, that's a good way of letting me know. The next video I intend on making is part of the same series as this one, and is titled, So You Want to Be a PvP God in Vanilla. I'm really excited for that video specifically as a PvPer, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are too. I'll see you around.